Hey guys, Dark Humility here. You can always catch me at twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action. PD2, D2R, we do it all, every manner of build. We got PD2 and D2R build guides on my own YouTube and at d2.maxwell.gg. We have tons of very high quality Diablo 2 guides. Today we will recording though I think my last full guide for PD2 for season 5 now remember the guides even from previous seasons usually have a ton of relevance you might just have to swap out an item here and there um, if they change um, an item or two but but this one we will be doing the 200 faster cast rate hardcore lightning sorceress which is very relevant for softcore in this case Maximum damage Ming Song's build. This is uh, pretty much the highest caliber damage sorceress you can muster besides maybe Nova, which should move a little bit faster in many cases. So today I'll be going over the stats, the skills, the gear, and we'll be doing some map demos of this monster. And we'll show you just how crazy powerful the lightning sorceress really truly can be. Uh, this is indeed a monstrous build. It's an S tier build for season 5. It is solid S tier, even faster than the Wind Druid, which is arguably the fastest Druid mapping build. So that can tell you uh, what we're dealing with today. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Let's get into the details and the nitty gritty. Today! Oh, oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, we'll of course have timestamps uh, below for, of course, every section of this guide. Alright, let's get into it. Stats, level 99 Sorceress on Hardcore. Very cool, I'm sure you've seen her before when she was wearing the Chromatic Ire. Uh, unlike the Chromatic Ire build, though, we are really pushing for even more damage. Uh, she's got three more, 3k more damage than that other build, and she also has a ton of... These um, have way more damage than the other build, and she also has a ton of negative enemy light res, which we'll go over on the other page. Uh, she has enough strength to wear her gear, that's pretty much it. Uh, dexterity, she doesn't need any. And then we put, we kind of balance our vitality and energy based on how hard we're going on energy shield. Uh, since it's only one point energy shield with two point telekinesis, it's mostly a buy to build in this case. Um, but if you go max telekinesis and you do other versions of this build, you can definitely put way more points in energy, especially if you want more mana sustain, uh, which in most cases can feel quite a bit better. But you'll see with this build that since it's just pure max damage, there's not as much mana and sustain as maybe a lot of players would like, especially on softcore when they're not worrying quite a bit as about survivability as much, but this is mostly just a Vita build. Uh, you're also going to want to max out your res if possible. Very good stuff in general. Of course, uh, we have a decent amount of defense, but that's mostly provided by the mercenaries, so it's not a big deal. So you have a. Uh, we definitely have way less life in the Chromatic Iron build, though. And. One thing to mention in the stats is that this build versus the Chromatic Ire build um, versus maybe like a Skull Collector or Infinity Staff build, this build really is built for maximum damage. Chromatic Ire build is better in group mapping, especially when you need survivability on hardcore, things like dungeons and whatnot. It's very, very good for those types of things. This thing is like pure damage. Um, Infinity Staff, I would say, is better for Nova, and Skull Collector can be an alternative source of survivability, especially on things like a Nova Sork as well, um, which you can also use with, like, Bone Flesh if you're using, like, Infinity Staff. So that's one thing I should mention here. There's definitely a ton of different approaches to a Lightning Sork or maybe a Nova Sork, which is similar. Um, of course, the Nova Sork, you definitely go harder on the sustain, and if you're going to Staff on Hardcore, you better believe that uh, you better hope you're really investing points in energy for mana, bone armor, cyclone armor, whatever you need to uh, make sure you are staying alive. But at any rate, uh, we have enough res, we got max res, the only reason I have 80 light res is because of T-Gods, which is because of lightning skills, so that's not really the focus of this build. 
This is a pretty dangerous build for hardcore. <clears throat> not gonna lie, there's not a lot of survivability here. Um, energy shield is a very good buffer, so you're not just taking pure damage to your HP, which is what's gonna keep us alive on hardcore. But on softcore, this isn't much of a problem. We do only have 9% damage reduction from the mercenaries' defiance aura, however. Um, it'd also be nice to have a bit more poison res, but not a big deal to have 74 poison res. You'll see here, though, a very important stat, though. Um, elemental mastery, mostly coming from lightning mastery itself, and a lot of percent light damage. But you'll see here 80% elemental pierce. Um, crazy stat, honestly. Uh, you can get up to, like, 90%, it's possible, but... <laughs> It's uh, kind of nuts to get 80% period elemental pierce. Um, crazy, crazy stat. Mana per kill and life per kill are going to be good on a lightning sword, even more so on a nova sword. But if you want more sustain, these are going to be very, very, very good stats. Leech doesn't do anything. Physical stats don't do anything on a caster build. Yeah, that 80% elemental pierce isn't even counting conviction aura from infinity, and it's not even counting static field, which I can use, and the lower resist for Ming Song's lesson. So we can potentially drop monsters' resistance is incredibly low, close to negative 100, even with the uh, half effectiveness penalty when you drop a monster's resistance below zero. Uh, against those uh, lightning resistant monsters, though, they basically don't have any lightning resistance against this build whatsoever. Even immune monsters are pretty close to zero or at zero or below in most cases. 200 faster cast rate, so we are firing as fast as possible. We're also teleporting as fast as possible. It's nothing more extreme than this. Uh, we have 194 FCR and we have 42 FHR. FHR is pretty good when you're not using a shield and you're not relying on block, so you can definitely get it even higher than this if you want to. This is kind of like the bare minimum, I would say. And then we just have some MF. This is, build's not focused on MF at all, but it's important to note that, you know, in terms of balancing your build, you can always balance. You can get more MF and whatnot. However, it is important to note that maps grant magic find. So if you have any amount of magic find at all in your build, plus the magic find from your maps, you're probably going to have decent magic find. Um, that being said, though, it could definitely be a bit higher for more optimal magic find. We're not using Geeds, so that's an easy way to do that as well. All right, anyway. That's pretty much it for the stats. Let's go into the skills. Skills are pretty easy. Warmth, one point. Mana regeneration, uh, one point of shiver armor for some extra defense. And... You're going to want to put one point in a static field, which can help you break lightning immunities. You're not going to be using this actively most of the time, because you'll just destroy everything on this build. That's how crazy powerful it is. Um, then, of course, you'll also have max lightning mastery, and then max chain lightning and all the synergies. So you go max all the way down. And this is where it gets a little tricky. It kind of depends on how you're playing the build. Uh, if you want to do a 200 FCR Lightning Chain Lightning Sorceress, though, uh, you are going to want to max out Teleport. If you're doing Teleport and Fire a lot, like this, because that damage penalty is going to be bad. And you can see here when I'm teleporting, you can see the damage penalty in real time on the character sheet. So, it's not as bad as it would be if it wasn't maxed. In my case, I max it out just because I want to go fast and deal tons of damage. That's all I really care about. But you can max out Telekinesis, you can even get Energy Shield higher. You can focus way more on mana and your items, which, you know, are, I would say even I would do if, um, if I had different items, which I'll explain when I get to the gear. Um, but in general, we still have strong Energy Shield and even, you know, just having Telekinesis few points into it is not too bad, but it could be a lot better, especially when it comes to uh, maintaining your mana and not having to pick up mana potions with telekinesis. But yeah, you can definitely put some more survivability in there instead of teleport, however just noting that this is like the pure max damage approach, so this is what we're showing off here today. Alright, so... Static Field is against, you know, immunities that are really stubborn against both lower resist from Ming Song's Lesson and the Conviction Order from Infinity. Um, Lightning's going to be your single target 
and Chain Lightning will be your multi-target. Uh, of course, Charge Bolt is also going to be pretty effective against um, single targets as well, but it would be even more effective um, if it was maxed out. This is not a Charge Bolt build specifically, but it's important to note that you actually can map with just Charge Bolt as well as Nova and other skills. Alright, so let's get into the gear. Lots of staves you can use. We mentioned a bunch of different staves you can use in different approaches. On the Lightning Sorceress, though, um, not a Nova Sorceress, just to make a very clear distinction. If you can't afford it, I would recommend either a Chromatic Ire or a Mega Song's Lesson. Chromatic Ire gives you a lot of freedom to move around and not get hit, it gives you a ton of HP, and it's a lot more defensive. I'd say it's a very strong option, especially for group mapping and hardcore. But if you're solo mapping in hardcore or just want maximum power, uh, Manga Song's Lesson in Season 5 is definitely the way to go. Um, if this ever gets nerfed, you know, I'm sure like a Shooters might come back into prominence. Shooters Temper, or you know, Shooters Temper plus Lidless and a bunch of other related approaches. However, um, when it comes to maximum power in Season 5, this is what you're going to want. Uh, we put a couple of res jewels into it. We also just put a lot of lightning facets into it. Um, strangely enough, it only rolled negative 13 enemy light res base, but it's a six socket and make a song's lesson. Um, props to Toadflax for uh, trading this to us. Uh, he corrupted it. I did not. Um, I traded for it, so it cost me 12 hirons. Which is a lot for hardcore. If you guys are <laughs> on softcore, something like this might cost close to 50, but nobody has 50 high runes in hardcore, so that's just how it is. Um, anyway, very, very expensive item, very rare item. It's very cool to demo with this today, uh, so definitely uh, give it some, a massive shout out to him. Uh, anyway, this is going to give us a ton of FCR, ton of plus skills. And a ton of negative enemy light res and it's also going to give us lower resist on casting which will help with breaking lightning immunities further lowering lightning resistance and just overall making your damage insane um very good item k hagen's wisdom this is definitely my chosen approach on this build on nova i might be more likely to choose something like atma's will for the mana um, but you definitely can go that route if you want even more mana but this gives us energy gives us mdr so it's a, it has a bit of defensiveness and mana per kill, which is the only sustain I have on this build. Um, arguably, I could go more MPK jewels or LPK jewels instead of lightning facets, which is what I put into everything, because it's the max damage build. Um, just to get more sustain, and I think for a lot of players that would be less frustrating, because then you'll be sustaining your life or mana a lot more actively. Uh, but that being said, uh, lightning facets, <laughs> why not? Griffin's Eye. Three lightning facets, once again, <laughs> massive lightning skill damage and enemy light damage everywhere. And as you can see, our damage truly reflects this. I mean, we've got level 47 chain lightning. It could be even higher than that, strangely enough, if you have like an FCR Stone of Jordan, put your CBF on your boost, but we'll talk about that. You can get even higher damage. Um, definitely, it's possible to achieve, I'd say, pretty close to like 30,000 lightning damage on a Lightning Sorceress, period, so you definitely could do it. Um, depends on how much res and other stats you want to sacrifice, but this isn't even the peak of damage. But in general, all these things are meant to give us a ton of FCR and get us to that 200 FCR, which is the max breakpoint. Uh, this is just a crazy amulet. This is pretty much where I'm getting all my mana from. Uh, and some of the remainder of our FCR and three skills and res. Um, we do need res. This build does struggle with res a lot, which is partially why we're lacking some of that sustain because I'm trying to get enough res. Um, you can use a cultist, but I'd need to find an all res occultist, and that's pretty tough to get on hardcore. Um, like you could use silk weeds here too. Uh, getting the right one can be difficult also with res and life and things like that, but in general this is giving us magic finds, so there's nothing wrong with these boots. Uh, silk weaves would definitely be really good though, you know, war traps can be good as well, but silks would be pretty solid for this build. Um, with life per kill, maybe even on top of mana per kill. Uh, more mana, cultists would give mana and curse duration reduction, but this is still a very solid approach with all res and FCR. 
All res FCR cannot be frozen. And 20 FCR with water res in life and mana. But once again, there are even better rings you can get. Even better approaches if you can get your res elsewhere. You can go for the FCR SOJ, put the cannot be frozen on the boots. We definitely have different types of boots on different builds that can fulfill that, but it's pretty tough to get some of these items. And of course the FCR corruption on the T Gods. T Gods is, in terms of damage, definitely best in slot no matter what, because it has the FCR. So yeah, you can get you can definitely get level 50 lightning plus, but it's going to be difficult no matter how you cut it. And then, of course, on the swap, you know, CTA Lidless. That's just pretty boring. Obviously, you can get like a plus three Lidless. It's always room for more skills. I personally think the three sockets are better, though, than the one skill two socket puzzle boxes on a light sword, though. Um, same thing with the Ming Song's Listen. Like, instead of one skill with four sockets, it's better to have six sockets. And the reason being is that the negative enemy lightning res is just such a key stat. One could argue maybe even the most essential stat for increasing your DPS and maps and just making this an overall power loader monster of a character. Um, anyway, I did talk about some alternatives for sure for uh, getting some more sustain, sustain and mana. You know, more mana and sustain can be good, and then of course you can put more points into energy uh, to compensate. And if you're ever using like a bone armor or a cyclone armor approach uh, on casting like an infinity staff or a bone flesh or skull collector, you're definitely going to put heavy into energy and invest into that energy shield. Uh, once again, then we have life, lightning GCs, FHR, it's where we're getting some of our FHR, very good lightning GCs, you got perfect life mana, small term, I traded for at some point, FHR, all res, small term, as well, and then a lot of life res, very good things in general, then very high sorceress torch, and just kind of a pretty decent ante in general that's giving us a lot of res because really suffering in that res department barely hitting maximum res is on hardcore when stacking is usually a very good idea and then of course defiance mercenary with infinity uh, there's really nothing that's going to be better on this build that's going to be able to affect the monsters while you're killing them Storm Spire doesn't really hit the enemies on lightning because you're keeping your distance. You're not usually tele stomping directly on top of them like with Nova. So, and also we have the lower resist on Mang Songs. And we have a ton of negative enemy lightning res and skills. So putting the infinity on the mercenary is sensible. It also means that we get the defiance aura from the mercenary as well. Which is in general very good stuff. FHR, res, attack speed, and life leech, and damage reduction, defense, damage, all kinds of things. A lot of people ask about the infinity base. Doesn't matter that much on PD2. Uh, there's so many options for gear because you have a belt, gloves, and boots that um, usually what you just want uh, for maximum damage output is somewhere between. 0 and 10 base attack speed weapon. If you don't know what that means, um, definitely check out the wikis on that. So there's like a lot of weapons that have like faster attack speed, which are negative base weapons. And then there's ones above 0 that are a bit slower. Strangely enough, PD2 tends to favor a bit of the slower ones. Not the slowest ones, but the slower ones for DPS because um, of how they changed weapon based damages in PD2 and also the fact that you can get a lot of attack speed on your gear Whereas in vanilla uh, It can be tough to sometimes get over 35 attack speed in a lot of cases if you want a solid build Which can mean the slower weapons aren't really doing much at all So yeah, that's pretty much all I need to know about that All right, I think we went over the stats the skills the gear the mercenary It's pretty much what you want to do in this build Let's go over some LOD areas real quick. I'm gonna go do my favorite things to show off on this build. Um, Arcane Sanctuary is just nutty. Very, very good. Kill the ghosts, pop the chests. 
Get tons of charms, tons of runes, tons of jewels, puzzle boxes, world sum shards, you name it from those special loot tables because the ghost cannot drop armor or weapon items. Cannot drop any armor or weapon items. Because their loot table is restricted, they tend to be extremely good at dropping other items. Right? If you, check her in, if you check her in action though, you can see that this area is insanely good. There's no lightning immunes, which even a much weaker version of any lightning sorceress can do this area incredibly well. You can see how fast we're teleporting in general. You can see this build has a lot of power. Gotta show off that max power. One thing to show a decent lightning sorcerer is doing this, and it's another thing to show off how powerful a really good light sword can be. Though, look how fast I can telekinesis the potions. So even if I don't have a lot of mana, I, I definitely consider 600 a bit low. I mean, I, I think 800, 900 minimum if you're going Vita build, and if you're going energy build, I mean, you can get really high amounts of mana. But in general, it's just really, really strong. You can always get more precision attacks with lightning. Target the ghosts. You can also target the other monsters, but there's nothing special about them necessarily. You can see them um, here. You go. Except for the fact they make for good collateral damage. Then bam, 200 SCR light Zerk in a split second. We'll clear that area, no problem. Let's see, you get any good charms here? Nah, of course not. Well, not in that room. Alright, it's also show off another very fun thing to do with the 200 FCR loaded lightning sorcerers. See how fast we are? The monsters can't even attack us. You never have to worry about getting clipped by something in River of Flame. Unless you're lag teleporting. In that, in that case, probably should switch to a different server. As you can see though, careful that the monsters don't take off your energy shield. Just be mindful that when your mana goes to zero, you can lose your energy shield. You can see though, just massive amounts of power. This build could make Player's 8 Chaos look like a joke. It's crazy powerful. Insane. Yeah, that lower resist cast on the Ming Song is pretty crazy. Oh no, not Diablo. You can see though, a few lightnings in his toast, especially if you static him beforehand. Um, pretty much the same with all the map bosses too, which we may as well start to show off now. Those are some of the favorite things to do on a lightning sword. Of course, um, you can also go key farming with any lightning sword, especially with 200 FCR, it's going to be very good. Um, very, very good in general. I guess maybe we can show that real quick. You can see we're just moving at the speed of sound. Dies in like one shot. <laughs> there you go. 
Farming them keys, you know, if you don't already have enough keys for mapping, that is uh, from the key event. There you have it. Alright, let's show off a tier one map. Just to show off how strong this fucking build is. Look. Oh man. You can already tell by now what we're doing with <laughs> this crazy amounts of power, man. As you can see here, though, that mana sustain is definitely a little bit of an issue on this version of the build. Which is why if you can get a cultist and get res elsewhere, you can definitely make it work. Maybe res MPK jewels. Res life jewels in the armor. Give up a little bit of damage, you know. Oh, we can actually break that lightning immunity, strangely enough. Um, as long as it's just lightning enchanted. With lower resist, static field, and conviction. We have a combination of all three methods of breaking lightning immunity on this build. You can just see how crazy powerful this is. Not a lot of builds that can really keep up with this. Funer SCR does allow us to pick up potions very quickly though, so... There is that at least. Just pick up a few potions here and there. In general, the monsters vanish, and when it comes to like narrow passages and narrow areas in general, this character performs very well. And of course, areas without a lot of light and resistance or immunity. Of course, on my filter, uh, which you can check out, the ADEV Dark Humility filter, it does show weak and strong mappers by element, and of course the most dangerous monster in each as well. You can be doing strong areas for lightning, however, it's important to note that you can even do weaker areas for lightning, ones that aren't particularly strong, and even ones that are somewhat weak. With a build like this, because you can break so many immunities, the lower resist and whatnot. Wants to say hello. What I want to show is I want to show this boss particularly. I want to show how fast you can eliminate this boss. But look, notice how the monsters are not even targeting or dying super far ahead of you. Lightning just has so much potential for power. If you're doing this with maximum teleport, like I'm doing here, teleport fire, teleport fire, teleport fire, teleport fire, you're actually fine because even though you're not getting maximum damage when you do that because of the one second teleport debuff, you have so much damage on this build. And even with a 25% nerf. It's still very strong. And you can play even more aggressively on software for sure. If you want. And especially if you have higher sustain. Practice that telekinesis potions. And there's about maps though, they drop a lot of potions, so even if your sustain kinda sucks, like 
mind is on this build. It's fine. Firing like one lightning by the way into like one group of monsters and then having the lightning like spread to other monsters. Like I said, you can definitely get some more coverage if you use the teleport fire, teleport fire approach. Like this. Super fast mapper though. Alright, looks like our bow ran out. Get that bow and shiver armor up, keep that energy shield up. Energy shield practically stays up forever, though. Now, watch this. See, we can just sit back here. We don't even have to get close to this boss. And look just how fast we train her HP. It's nuts. See, you don't even need the lower res in a tier 1 map. These monsters have a decent amount of HP, but... Just can't take it, man. So even against, like, max life maps... Build's gonna do a monstrous amount of damage. Pretty crazy, right? Always kick the clickable, man. I lost my energy shield there for a second. When the mana goes down to zero, you just want to watch that energy shield. See, as you can see, the most annoying thing about this version of the build that I have here is no mana. But you can easily fix that. Silk, Weave, SOJ, and Occultist are good options. More MPK, more LPK. And just going more points into energy, honestly. But since we're focusing on max teleport, it might not be a good idea in hardcore to rely on energy for your survivability. And you don't have max telekinesis. So that's why this is a Vita build. That's why we're doing what we're doing. As you can see, they're uh, crazy fast. And you know, if you're not even picking up items or anything, you can just test how fast you can really clear those maps. It gets down really low those times. Nutty, nutty, nutty speeds. Nutty, nutty, nutty speeds. Alright, well. Obviously, that's a strong tier 1 map, but how does she perform in higher tier maps, you might wonder. Well, that's why we're here. We're here to throw her off in other, uh, other dimensions as well. Those are lightning immune monsters right there. Those afflicted? Doesn't matter. Now we can't break that immunity, but that's because it's a lightning immune monster that's also a lightning enchanted, so that's pretty tough. You have a lot of bonus lightning res, but that's okay. I don't need to break everything. The mercenary is really strong too, so. You can handle it. See though. You can also use your mobility is the fact that you can move around a lot and you have max teleport. 
really cool. Because then you're, only, you're not getting that huge damage penalty. It's interesting to know, with no points in a teleport, damage penalty is 65%, so teleporting like this and firing would be very ineffective if you decide to not go any points in a teleport. Um, or just one point, which would be 63%, which is still really bad debuff. One shot, even lightning and Shannon. One shot from half HP. Let's see, actually, can I break this with. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while there will be a monster that you can't deal with, but. Yeah, that's a really unlucky combination of stats right there, though. Monster got. Very, uh. You know. Particular monsters sometimes get a uh, crazy stats, you know. All right, what do we got here? Uh, uh, uh. All right, this is a good map, though. There are other strong tier twos though for this build. Note that we're doing this on hardcore. It's pretty much just like a one point energy shield build. You just gotta be very careful, you know, you can't just jump into anything. As long as you keep your distance, though, it's pretty good. It's another one of those two handed hardcore specials. I don't recommend this for group mapping, though, on hardcore. It, you, you, you'll die probably. Chromatic Iron makes it a lot safer for group mapping, but if you use this. Especially with the amount of mana I have. They just don't have enough of an energy shield. The thing about players 1 though is you can just go full throttle. Oh my god. That is annoying. Wow, okay, well. <laughs> That's what we call a skip. Let's go around the monster or just try to bypass somewhere. Monsters die pretty much before they can kill you. This is a true, you know, the best defense is a good offense approach on this character. This character, this build, really lives by that motto. I mean, you can even do things like bash and keep because you kill the, kill the witches so fast by the chain lightning chaining to them ahead of you. Can't even kill you. Another news running out of mana sucks. But I think you guys get the idea there, though. And, you know, the more narrow the area, you know, the faster you kill the monsters. Mm, the narrower the passage, the better. Alright, let's do this here. Yes sir, yes sir! Oh wow, maximum damage MF. Cool. Alright, we can show off another tier 1 as well. That was a tier 2 there. Um, Horizons is a tier 1. This is a tier 1 that I would consider to be insanely good. They're pretty much cold fire and lightning builds. Lightning though! We'll need infinity for sure, but once I get it, that's really crazy strong. Oh, I can't believe that hit me, I didn't jump over it. And then one thing to mention is that without the slow with chromatic ire, you're also not going to be able to face tank archers quite as easily, so just... What am I getting hit by? Oh my goodness. Sloppy gameplay. Rip. Careful for the archers, for sure. Oh, 
but that's about it. Remember, we don't have a shield. Negative block maps are actually good. But another thing to mention now is we also cannot block archer fire. We have 9% DR. or lightning resistant afflicted doesn't matter. I have to pick up some gems here and there. That's about it. Let's see the absolute carnage that this character produces. Oh, wind hammer. Yeah, you see all these elite packs, it really doesn't matter. It's really good for lightning. It means you're not attacking tons of monsters up in front of you. Monsters dead you don't even know about in this build. The only bad thing is that these little jails, sometimes you gotta like run your way in or past the jail doors. That's about it though. You can almost always find an end though somewhere. See teleport, teleport fire technique. And the 200 FCR, it's very fast as you can see. Pretty good demo, I'd say, of that map as well. You can see how ridiculously strong she is. I love Royal Crypts uh, on a lot of those elemental builds this season. It's very, very strong. I'd say the only weakness is that the monster types might necessarily not be the best. Ooh, nice one, Hammer. <laughs> wow, it actually got attack speed though. Hmm. Attack speed, that's interesting. Huh. Not ideal, but you know, it's not terrible. 80% crushing blow. You're not gonna hit 155 attack speed with that though, unfortunately. Uh, actually, wait. No way, you could actually. Four socket puzzle box, yeah? You could actually hit that with that, okay. Yeah, you either want attack speed or lots of sockets, typically. Like, attack speed ED would also be good. Attack speed crushing blow is interesting though. Man, you would double phase D clone so fast with that thing. Yikes. Alright. And then, last up, we're best tier 3. Um, River of Blood is also going to be really good. And because you have so much negative enemy light res, you could even do things like Throne of Insanity with this build. However, we'll see just how ridiculously she's strong she is. This tier 3 is probably the best way to show it. There's a mixture of like narrow areas and like open areas on this map, so. Not always as ideal as. 
maybe a river of blood. But since we're doing this demo in hardcore, I don't want to randomly die for no reason. With a less than, you know, ideal tanky build, it's good. Definitely not as tanky as you probably want for River of Blood. Those archers will shred you. But, I think from this though, you can get the idea though. I to note is that this isn't a hardcore build, this is actually more of a softcore build. Especially without more mana and sustain and more reliance on energy shields. So, if you're wondering, can you build this on softcore? Oh, even more, even easier I would say. This is harder to pull off while we're pulling it off here. Like I said, you can play a lot more aggressively on softcore too, if you don't care about getting to 99 that is. Go I care about going to 99, you might not want to play that aggressive. Arguably the chromatic Iro approach, which still does a ton of damage. It's probably gonna be good. But nothing gets lightning pierce into straight damage. Quite like this approach. TR man. And bam, bit of bam, bam, bam. You can see though. Kind of jump around all you want. There's a massive amount of power on this build. And mobility. to know. Oops, let ourselves get hit a little bit too many monsters there. If you accidentally teleport to something bad, just tell you out as fast as possible. We have FHR, we got teleport speed. We don't want to use it. Well, this fool can kill a boss too, especially if you use mercenary as a bait. You don't have to worry about dying too much. See how many monsters even die off screen. It's one of the best parts, best things about this build, honestly. See if you can keep up the very best of them. And hopefully. Gotta say the light sword this season is stronger than she's ever been. She already got really strong as of last season. Now with the addition of powerful weapons like these, she's looking monstrous. Crushing these ancestral trials pretty much as soon as they begin. This is crazy stuff. And that. Looks like our demo phase is closing up here pretty soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys are inspired. Try out ultra powerful lightning spark builds. 
You can do very similar things with like charge bolt, for instance. Uh, Nova, you might want to use slightly different approaches, like uh, Swarm Spire and Infinity Staff instead. Maybe even Bone Flesh for Bone Armor, so you have both. And if you don't want sustain issues, MPK, LPK, or Mana. This build definitely has a bit of sustain issues, but. That's okay. Oh my goodness. Not moving around enough. Plus better. Cool. I like that. Where's the boss? Look how fast you shred him. Damn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do an insanely fast ancestral trial. According to my in game timer, as a matter of fact, I've only actually been in the game for eight minutes. And I even uh, stayed there and was like, yeah, I'll decide I'll finish it. I wasn't sure if I'll actually finish the area. I decided at the end there, okay, I'll finish the area. Yeah, so, um, crazy, crazy power. PG stuff. Let's see what we got here. Let's slam some last items and I'll bid you farewell. Till the next set of guides, and I'm sure we'll do plenty more guides and demos. All kinds of cool stuff again for season. Oh my goodness, wow, that is nice. It's a very good life, all res. Very nice. Believe it or not, those aren't needed very much. <laughs> um, yeah. See, of course, for more of those in Season 6 PD2. Be doing a lot more D2R guides coming up here pretty soon. Hope you love both versions of the game, but if you don't, that's okay. We will, of course, we always switch off between the two. Depending on what's going on with the ladder and whatnot. Attack rating on Drax. Okay, not bad, considering it's a melee. Uh, also on the post spitter. Okay. Honestly, these slams weren't bad. Not here. Weren't terrible. I mean, they weren't amazing, I should say, but yeah, they were, definitely weren't terrible. Alright, baby. For sure, uh, sometimes pick up more Jews than I pick up. Sometimes I don't pick up enough. Uh, 200 FCR telekinesis is no joke. Don't underestimate it. Yeah, this is a crazy S tier build on my tier list, which uh, you can see the S5 Season 5 tier list on YouTube. This is definitely one of the top rated builds for a reason. Um, at least the Lightning Sorceress. It's just listed as Lightning Sorceress, but you can see why. Once you get 200 FCR, once you get Ming Song's Listen, once you get crazy negative enemy light res, there's just nothing she can't tear through. Uh, one of the fastest mappers in the game just in general. One of the strongest builds. Um, arguably safer than Nova as well, because you don't have to get right up in there with the dual auras sometimes that happen, or even the tri auras. It can be insanely dangerous. Um, it's okay. You don't have to do it. But just another awesome use of a staff on Hardcore. Um, maybe in the future we'll show off some more uses of a staff in Season 6. Uh, there are more. Plenty more, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> even on Hardcore, so this isn't Softcore specific. Uh... Do you need a shield on Hardcore? That's uh, one of the biggest conclusions for Season 5, and I was like, well, not necessarily. You just gotta know how to play it right. Um, for the Druid, for instance, uh, you can do group mapping, but you definitely gotta stay in your animals, make sure uh, you're staying 
uh, on t your animals are right on top of you. Um, chromatic ire you can even do group mapping with. This I would say probably keep it to solo mapping, but I've seen people do group mapping with this. You're just gonna want a lot more mana and sustain. Um, and probably barbo for that, so you might be just fine. Uh, you might also want to focus on more damage reduction, like Dungos, maybe a DR Corrupted, Griffins, things like that. So there's definitely ways to make this work, um, even in group maps on Hardcore, but it's a lot tougher. Uh, anyways, she's a monster. Hope you enjoyed all the demos, the stats, the gears, and the overview and everything else. I will see you guys next time, and uh, let's get it. Dark Humility, over and out. Check out the timestamps below. And of course, like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos and want more of them. We will go over all kinds of awesome techniques, strategies, builds, and demos on Diablo 2. I love this game. Hope you love it even half as much as me. Dark Humility, over now. See you guys next time. Twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility.